Cartier? Yeah. How much? 4,000. <laughs> cheaper, cheaper. 4,000? No way, it's crazy. What's the worst thing that can happen if I buy this watch for $12,750? If you're not desperate for cash, you break even. I think the worst thing that will happen with this watch is I lose $1,250. High risk, but high reward. Here's a 41 millimeter day date. Now watch this. That's how big the stone is. Retail's about 1.7 million. This one here, it's about 3.7 million. This one, 1.7. Those three stones could literally be a showcase at our show. Hey guys, I just wanna remind you of the deal that we made. We put in a lot of hard work to make these videos. So all we ask in return is that you hit the subscribe button. And in doing so, every single time you guys hit the subscribe button, we'll be giving our new team member here, Senna, a treat. So subscribe and enjoy the show. So we're setting up for the antique show. Very important show. I cannot wait to see what the mood is going to be like overall in the room because that's gonna give me a pretty good indication of where the market is heading for the beginning of the year. It was two years ago to this day that this gentleman asked me for a very specific watch. Two years later, we are finally able to deliver it. A two-year hunt for this very watch that I'm about to hand over to him. There she is. Absolutely. This is a special moment. This is a long time coming. A long time coming, indeed. It'll match the, uh, the beast. Exactly. Now, beauty aside, uh, we also have something else that isn't as special. It's just something. I mean, this is just a secondary, like, just a uh, F.P. Jordan stenograph in rose gold. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's short right now. Alex has helped source these in other colors. Yes. So, uh, they have platinum as well, aluminum, and here we have a rose gold. A lot of gold on the table with the new edition, the 222, recently picked up. There's the one, there's the two, and there's the three. No specific order, but uh, no, seriously. So you guys may remember one of my good clients, he's been on camera before. He came through the show, picked up a few pieces, some pretty significant pieces, including an FP Jordan Santagraph in rose gold, a original reference Royal Oak Offshore in yellow gold. Shout out to you, I really appreciate you coming through. Now let's watch Gary close this big jewelry deal. You can come here, come, come, come. Show me first what you have. You have big pieces, big, big, big. <laughs> yeah, happy price. Mr. Yeah. Happy Price. Yes. How are you? Van Cleef, Van Cleef, show me Van Cleef. Show me big. How much sure. this? Yeah. I just sold one like this. I want something big. Big Alhambra diamond. <laughs> My friend. My friend. Oh, another friend. I'm surrounded by friends. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Start. Okay. Give me a Flamaster. I write on this. Nina, give me another uh, bean, please. No, empty, 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 empty. empty. No, the, the stuff that I don't want. Ah. Gonna do big business, big business. Big business. Tsunami. Yes. Cartier? Yes. Sorry. How much? Big size. 4,000. 4,000? <laughs> cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. 3,5. Chocolates from Paris. Uh -huh, thank you. From Paris, the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. I gave him the chocolate and I got the price that I wanted. Watch what happens. Take. Yes? Three, five. I told you. One, three. Check, one, three. Sorry. One, four. Okay. Four. Four thousand? Yes, yes. What? what is this? Five. Huh? Five. Five. Who is this? Tiffany. Yeah, Tiffany. Kunzai. Size, блядь, for a... Cheaper? Что Tiffany такое? 4500. Maybe. What is this? How much? Wait. This graph? How much? 3000. 25, okay? It's uh, pearls, pearls. Pearls dead, dead. Only dead people wear pearls. Okay. For best. No problem. This Cartier? Huh? Oi, yo, yo, yo. How much? Give me cheaper, cheaper, cheaper price. You know, give me cheaper. Great show, thank you. Only 4,000? You have a JA? Huh? Paper? Yeah, but what color? Clarity. 18,000? The best price? 250,000 in the store. 
beautiful Cartier. Twenty over twenty carats. Think, think. Jokes aside, we do a lot of business with those guys. You know, I have a feeling tomorrow they're gonna come back and we're gonna do a lot more business. The problem is, is like that dial, even though it's not in perfect shape, most of them have peeled off by now. Like, yeah. I've, you know what I mean? Like, I've yet to see one that actually has a decent dial like that. It's cool. Most, most of them are like half peeled. What is it? Like, what's the dial? It's a Rolex. Yeah, I know. It's, 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 it's basically a film. It's not even like, it's not anything. Like, yeah, whenever it's I like, pick it up, I'm just... It's like a film, like a, a borderline, like a piece of tint, I would say. So you're mainly vintage Cartier? Yeah. I mean, Rolex Patek also, Breguet, so, Piaget, but... So, I mean, I, my personal take is that I think vintage Cartier guys are some of the most low-key collectors. Like, yeah, like, definitely. But it's becoming a flex. Thanks yeah. to guys like Ronnie on Instagram, he's yeah, made it a big deal, double sign stuff. Yeah, but he, he's not a flexor. He's not, not at all. So how about, how about, forget the conjure, I rarely see these in this combination to begin with. You never see the links, like, it's and completely And then switched. we found the conjure. But you're not, you don't get into AP. No, I do. Vintage. 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 Secondary. I mean, you can yeah. call these. I like a 5 for two. class, to this uh, class, class too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I quoted you for Dude, I had a 5402 stainless steel that was, Number either, I think it was serial number 88, very low. A? Yeah, and somebody, my client took it off my wrist. And yeah, so that's one for a Chinese client, right? Yeah, you, think, you think? This is the only one that we have that would be. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Sure. I need your help. My mom, just like how we, I, we got that first Mueller, that jeweled um, Quant M season, mm -hmm. she loves those type of jeweled watches. Okay. I know you guys had that Van Cleef under the bridge. That's watch. long gone. We we are we have one of those. Okay. Um, we've got like the Bulgari Peacock. We've got a bunch of them. In it. Like I always make sure she gets automatics. But sometimes those jewelry watches, there's no way around them being quartz. Obviously. That's just the way it is. But there's nothing wrong with that. Not, you come across any of those, man? Sure, I got you. Please. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just uh, service. Yacht Club. Yacht Club. What are you looking, to, from, are you looking uh, to get for it? I'm from know. Canada, so it's 10 Canadian, so I'm roughly around. What is that in dollars? Uh, I, think it I mean, that's what or something. they sell for around there, a little less in America. What do you think? I, buy, I pay, I pay like in the fours for them. In the fours? Yeah. So unfortunately, they don't. When they first came out with the first version of that watch, it did really, really well, but then they made too many versions of that okay. watch, and it's like any other WC. Well, I was talking to a colleague. About for this one. Okay. Uh, he told me it was a bit shaved down on the polish. The what? It's shaved down on the polish or something? Thank you, Doug. So. Of course. Oh, yeah, somebody fucked this watch. This one, the bezel is just too far gone. Uh, yeah. The bezel, uh, how about the case? I mean, both. Uh, what would Nico say? This watch has been penetrated from behind without a condom? Okay. Yeah. So, whoever did this, they ruined this watch. Like, a, it's a project. Like, like. And I don't know if my guys would ever even fix it. I would probably have to send it back to AP. See this? These lines are supposed to go this way. The lines on the case are supposed to be here. This is, this is, somebody took the sandpaper to this damn thing. It's terrible. How are you? So what is this again? So it's a Patek Gondola from 1972. Full set. And I mean complete, I mean complete. Box, papers, service papers, uh, original certificate. Urine sample? No. I didn't get that far because he's dead, but <laughs> it was originally owned by Mr. Banks, who was um, the father of Mary Poppins. Uh, let me see what I'm Okay, so what's this watch worth without Mr. Poppins? Yeah, that's... I'm just trying to see... 10K USD. Yeah, I'm just not... So it's, you're paying $4,000 for the fact that this is Mr. Banks' watch. And the problem with the problem with this type of provenance is every extra second it takes to explain who you're talking about, you're losing value. But you don't know his name, but if I show you the picture, you knew straight away. Yes. Oh. Well, I guess we can do a quick test. Comment below, guys, if you know who Mr. Banks is. Just yes or no. So you won how much for this? 10 pounds. Um, so 10,000 pounds today is $12,750. What's the worst thing that can happen if I buy this watch for $12,750? Pop quiz. You lose. I think you could, I think you, worst case scenario, if you're not desperate for cash, you break even. I think the worst thing that will happen with this watch if I buy it for $12,750 is I lose $1,250. You think you're not gonna lose the entire thing? It's not, it's not a fake so, attack. 
Me this guy, we go back a long time. The market is heating up when it comes to tank style vintage watches, right? And that's what that paddock is. It's a tank, Cartier tank style vintage watch. The size, the look, overall it works. Then there's a story behind it. There's history behind it. It belonged to a famous person. And last but not least, it comes with all these bells and whistles. So in my mind, I'm thinking, it's another good Roman buy. This belongs to Mr. Banks. Now it belongs to Mr. Sharp. This is called white gold onyx stone dial Patek Philippe. It's in the Ellipse family. It's the more interesting version. There's also a more square version. Uh, this, feel, this is a more integrated feel with the bracelet. It's very cool. Never fails. When you're making a purchase at your booth and there are people standing around, in this case, it was Mike Naveau. You might have seen him on TikTok. Of course, he brings over some watches for me to buy. Let's see if he can sell me something. Um, 50s? Price? 50s, I said. The year. era? Yeah. No, no, it's 70, late 70s. Late 70s. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was older. It's actually a good bang for your buck yeah. when you compare it to uh, a Rolex Onyx 25K. No, I'm trying to sell it. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because some guys are like, I brought, on, I brought a few. It's perfect, I essentially. Cool. What else? Yeah. Watches, I don't know what I'm going to do. And wine this. This one needs to be wound first. Oh no, it's, it's yeah, wine. I want the tourbillon to roll. It's a Breguet Mother Pearl Guilloche oh, Dial like Tourbillon. Diamond bezel, all factory of course, and diamond buckle. Look at the oxidation on the back of the on the movement. You know what else is cool about these? Put a little diamond in the pin too. See the other, so that when it goes like this, the diamonds actually match. And you want how much? Forty six. Yes, thank you. Maybe. We should have started with the, the cheaper ones. No, no, this is not for me. Yeah, yeah. This, this is an ultra tropical. Yeah, not my, not my cup of tea. Didn't think so. It's not my cup of tea. Yeah, I figured. It'd I mean, honestly, two. the only thing is, it's probably that. So I, I have bought these cheaper. Uh, I think you're asking a fair price. Lost papers or anything? No, it's taken, unfortunately. At that price, I would trade. I, I don't want, like, when I when I say I would trade, I don't want to point you to a watch because then it's like I'm trying to get rid of something. I'd rather you point at something you like so that way I'm not trying to shove anything. I just, it's really literally what you want to. Yeah, it's a client's watch. I, I mean, he if he were here, he would probably be down to just move out of it into something else. I just can't speak for him. I mean, if I had to make a cash offer, I would write him a check for 35 grand. Right. What are we, we're selling chocolate? All the way from Paris. We have a special box of chocolates. Life is not a box of chocolates. You never know it's which like, one you're gonna. It's like a box of chocolates. Yes. You never know what you which get. one you get. Hey guys, and don't forget, our brand new series, Full Set, is actually premiering next week. And if you want to show off your collection, talk about your collection, talk about watches, sit down one-on-one -on -one and go over your collection, there's a link below where you can actually register to be on our new series called The Full Set. Actually a very cool piece. And it's priced right, 3,600. Yeah. The retail is 13,200. The more they raise the retails, the, the more people want to buy. Absolutely. <laughs> it it doesn't work the same way in my store. I know, it doesn't work the same in my store either, but that's the story. This is actually a cool necklace. Yeah, that's a really cool yeah. This couple, you know, they come to every show and we always do a nice business with them. They're very pleasant people to deal with and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Moving right along, 4169, it's VCA. I think that price this point. is Christian Dior. You can have a pride of ownership. You know how it works. You know, at our age, if you wake up in the morning and nothing hurts, it means you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Do you want to hear something funny? There was a man on the line, right? right? And both Brad and I noticed he was looking at me or him. Uh -huh. I looked at Brad and I said, did you notice the guy looking at you? And he goes, no, he was looking that up. So, I mean, at least, at least, you know, I'm not, you know what they say, you can take one for the team, you know, so. I'm happy if anybody's looking at me. You know what they say? I'm not gay, but 20 bucks is 20 bucks. <laughs> 2600, I'll do 20 450. Okay. Okay. 25. I I, no. I didn't say 25. No. I was gonna yeah. say 25. <laughs> I'll do 2450 okay. on that. 2600. Okay. 14750. <laughs> I, I that's that's it, guys. Okay, good. That really is Fair okay. Enough. Okay. So you're gonna go and add, and do all of this, and then we'll come back. Okay. okay. Can I have this? Yes. I'm still thinking um. about the Cartier Trinity necklace, but need to just take a walk. On it. What's the bottom on that? 12,000. 
Costas 11 and I just, I just, that's what I just said. I quoted them 12,000. 12, so you'll take it off the um, website? You have it it's on the website? It come, yes, yeah. of course. So just for 16,000? It so will come off, it will yeah. come off, yeah. yes. Do you want to do that then? Let's just, what, how much do you quote us? 12,000. Yeah. Let's just this way. Some, yeah. No problem. Okay. Yeah, they spent like 60 grand, you know. One good thing about these people, I'm getting paid, which is very important. All right, guys, as you know, watches is not the only thing we do. We also do jewelry. And with the famous hashtag that Nina has created, hashtag rare is what we do. So when I come out to these shows, I tend to look for rare stones, rare pieces of jewelry. And when it comes to rare stones, they come in different shapes, colors, okay. which is predominantly which is colors. I'm gonna show you, this is a fancy deep orange brown diamond. This is 64 carats. Let me put this in perspective because on camera it may look smaller. Here's my hand. Here's a 41 millimeter day date. Now watch this. That's how big the stone is. Now, you would say, Roman, Brown, what, what's going on? You have to understand something. So, color stones come in at different ranges, right? So, when you talk about brown stones, they may not necessarily, but when you're talking about a brown stone, it's also a deep orange because it gives off an orange hue, and that's just what it's certified as. What's the clarity on this stone, guys? VS1. It's a, it's a VS1, so it means it's very slightly included, which means it's I mean, it's not flawless. If this was flawless, it's probably triple the money. What does something like this retail for? Retail's about 1.7 million. 1.7 million. And often, when clients come out to purchase something like this, or they're looking to make something out of it, or they're looking to put it away as an investment, what do you mostly find clients doing with things like this? Because this is a humongous stone. Because look, think about it. This'll, this will typically go into a, a, a pendant. A pendant. Well, speaking of pendants, I'm gonna move on to a pendant. Now, tell me more about this stone because it's already independent. This is a fancy brown orange. Now, when it comes to diamonds, size does matter because the bigger the diamond, a single diamond is, the rarer it is. Because oftentimes you'll hear, you look at pieces of jewelry and say, oh, this jewelry has 10 carats of diamonds and it's 10,000. This jewelry has 10 carats of diamonds and it's 50,000. It all depends on the size of the single stone. And when I say size does matter, you have things like this. That's a 40 carat fancy intense yellow. So. You have light yellow, you have yellow, you have, uh, what is it, intense, and then you have vivid, right? Vivid is would probably the richest yellow color. The fact that it's intense, it's gonna be, what's the lamest term I can use, yellower. This is even more rare because it's, um, it's about 100 years old. Um, this is an old mine cut. Um, mm -hmm. We have another old mine cut example here. This is a, this is a 44 carat, Ooh. and that's, that's a, more in the white range. And they're both about a little over 100 years old. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make earrings. No. So what are we looking at price-wise for these two? This one here, the 44, is um, about 3.7 million. This one, 1.7. Is there a premium on the older cut stuff versus the newer cut stuff? It's just a, it's a specialized market. Um, yeah. Not that much of a premium, but when you start getting up in size like this, then you know, you, there is a premium. Because there's not a whole lot of old, uh, big old miners out there. Exactly. And I'm going to finish this with a grand finale, and yes, I said diamonds come in all shapes and sizes. Wow, wow. And here's a couple of million dollars for you. Here's a couple of million dollars for you, and seemingly it's not a whole lot of anything. But these are red diamonds. Would you say red is, red and green are the, the top rarest color yes. ones? Red exactly. Is the number one, and if you look at a pyramid, red is on the top. So red is top, then we're looking at green, blue. And you're looking at, uh, yes, oh. green. Yeah. And vivid orange. Vivid yeah. orange. So vivid orange is, is rarer than a vivid blue? Uh, yes. Vivid wow. Because most of them will come off yellow also, yes. right? It's very hard to get it. Because these these when they grade these colors, it can be a yellow orange, it can be a brown orange. Okay. And what are we talking about price-wise? This is about 1.1 million. So we're talking about we're talking about 1.1 million dollars. And how many how many carats is each stone? The total carat weight of the reds is 1.1 carats. That's a million a carat. You guys understand that? Just to conceptualize this, here's here's a stone here's a stone that's 40 carats, and here's one carat. And look at the price. And here's, this is and a true orange. Orange. And look at this. And that's that's actually a very large orange because normally you find them so tiny. How many, how many, how many? This is one carat. One carat. A little bit over a carat, one or two. So um, these three equal one of these. Yes. And price-wise, ballpark retail. This is, the vivid orange is two and a half million dollars retail. So what would you ever have, this or this? 
This is how insane the diamond market is. It takes balls, like, like we do with rare big watches. It takes big balls to go after stones like this, to find these rare stones, because I promise you now, I can make 50 phone calls and walk the entire room. I will not find another orange in a room, and I will not find an orange just sitting with dealers. Pretty amazing. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate the insight. I appreciate you showing us this stuff. Hashtag rare is what they do. <laughs> Absolutely insane pieces. Speaking of insane. Oh my God. Let's just say I would wear it on a regular basis. Weighted run. Thank you, Richard. Wait, it could, be, it could be the weighted run. You know how you put the best on? Yeah, exactly. This is, this is ridiculous. Double up, double up, double up. The money I cut up. My friend, huh? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Seven five. Seven thousand. Cash. No cash. Seven five. This guy drove me crazy. You know, he offered me seven thousand for the piece. I said seven five. I would not budge for a dollar with him, because he was coming back for ten times and drove me crazy. He put me to sleep. This guy. Oi, <laughs> lad. What's the link? Okay. Okay. Finish. Okay. Swagger, you have a coin? No. Give me a coin. Give me a coin. Give me a coin. No. 25 cents. No. Coin. No, no, no. We flip. No. No, not best. We flip. No, seven no, 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 no. Or seven five. Right. Idea. Go home. Give me seven. Give me seven thousand. He woke me up. He could have bought it for 6500 He had an opportunity. Listen, on 6000 I was making money, but not enough. <laughs> Oh. Easy on the calculator, round two. Round two. Less price on the calculator. Five thousand. Ha! Yes. Easy, go, go easy on the calculator. Давай. Six thousand. What? Six thousand. I don't understand. No? I don't understand. No. Don't understand. How much? Don't understand. Seven five sold. We're live. Oh, I was supposed to stop. Hello. People. Welcome to the USA Antique Show. You know, are you rolling? Should you? Should we be rolling? I don't know. You see me roll? So right, I'm pulling hot. Alrighty. All right. So we're gonna go straight. While we are here, we're doing normal business. Obviously, still online and in person. But for now, I sourced a watch, and it is at a booth just around the corner. So, in uh, Alex fashion, I'm driving myself with the scooter to this booth. Let's pick up this watch that I sourced and sold while at the show. Look at these Apexes, watch this. Hello. I, I do have to deliver this watch in person today or tomorrow, so. Actually tomorrow morning, I'm going on a delivery in far away Miami and it's going to be a 15202 BC but for now I purchased this amazing is it in here it's right here Daytona new reference yellow gold 116508 126508 source and sold this is the new Daytona smaller bezel dials are a little smaller we will bring around it very nice okay awesome cool Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I was able to source and sell this 126508 Daytona that I saw at the show. So a successful deal. Now let's get back to the show. So at these shows, again, it's not a watch show. There are more, there's more jewelry here than there are watches. So for me to say that I'm looking at anything in particular, I'm always looking for everything because we have such variety because I don't stick to, we don't stick to one thing. I, got, I bought a watch. You probably say I'm an idiot, but it's not my thing. I know it's not my thing, but look, a, a client of mine with whom I have a very long relationship with brought this over and I bought it for 12,000 American dollars. Okay. But wait, there's a catch. This watch belonged to Mr. Banks from Mary Poppins. 
We have all the letters and paperwork. It has original papers, original box, original letters from the Sun, as well as service papers from Paddock, and original invoice from Watches of Switzerland from 1970 something. Was it worth 12 grand? Yeah, I think what, like the, 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 I mean, maybe not the watch itself. I mean, the watch itself is worth seven, 8,000? Plus, 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 plus. What's nice is that like these type of tank watches with the Roman numerals, obviously with the success of Cardi has been having for the past three years, the fact that it belongs to Mr. Banks and it's a bubble bag. Yeah, the funny thing is, I've asked a couple of people who Mr. Banks is, they had no idea until I showed them the picture. Well, he was Mr. Banks in Mary Poppins. He's an English actor. I, yeah, I don't know. What's the retail price of something like this? 90000 What What do you think the original price was? A couple hundred? 200 maybe? 200? That's amazing. That's pretty. Huh? Let me put my glasses on. There's three of these out there. Fofi in Italy wants 300,000 euros for his. What'd you sell this for? It's sold for 140 right now. It's good. It's a good number. Would you agree? Beautiful dial. By the way, me and this guy, we go back about... Uh, how about we go back to when I was working out of my basement. This guy calls me up on the phone. He's like, hey, my name is Todd. Typical Miami. You know, burnt out fucking voice and everything. I fly down, I fly down to Miami next time around. We meet up at his apartment. Where were you back then? 450 Alton Road, the Icon. That's right, the Icon. He was Arthur. That's right, you were, you were, you were, at, the, you were at the Icon. And like, this is cool, typical Miami guy. I was like, this guy looks like a fucking shyster. We've been doing ever si business ever since. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> All right, so I made a new friend at the show. Apparently, I spoke to him via WhatsApp a bunch of times. Problem is, with, when you talk to other dealers, you don't really know who is who because I, we have a million contacts. But Alessia from the Watch Boutique, we're talking Lugano, Milano, and now you're opening up in New York. Yes. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you to show me what you think is the most special watch in your showcase today. Well, uh, it's a very interesting question. I love all watches in our inventory because they're an expression of my taste and uh, they all, in a way, are part of a collection rather than an inventory. Uh, I love these Daytonas, Magnum Wine Daytonas that you see here. And incidentally, Tony Traina from Odinki was taking pictures of uh, an instant ago. Uh, this is a Paul Newman and this is a Gold 6263. There are two very special watches. But if you ask me what is my favorite watch here, when I said I would your not favorite watch, I say this. yours. I mean, you Mine personally. Mine would be this. This is no ordinary 3700. It's this not like the a, one we have in our case. This is a Slash 11. Only 200 were made. And the difference uh, is mainly in the bracelet. This has a bracelet that was actually manufactured by Patek Philippe. It's slightly thinner and slightly lighter than the Gay Frères one on the Slash 1. The Slash 1 was produced in 1,500 pieces. The Slash 11 in 200. And I think that out of these 200, very, very few arrived in this condition. In a full set. In a full set. With, with original papers. Original papers, original box. And what you see here is the effect of aging on the leatherette of the of the original box. I mean, it happened these with these boxes all through the 2000s. Be like this, absolutely. So this is actually an incredible, incredible object. From my point of view, it's a time capsule. It's something that really speaks to me. When I find a vintage watch so well documented, this actually still has the original invoice. Wow. It's incredibly well documented. And look at the beauty of the engraving of his initials on the back. It's just a masterpiece. So if we're selling our 3700 that doesn't have the box of papers for 175, this is about 400,000. I was about to say the same. Yeah. Amazing, Alessio. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming by, right, Roman. I'll see you later. None of this stuff is for sale. He came to display no, so the many show people just to show me, people. So many people asking me a price and they said, I'm so sorry, but it's not for sale. And they were looking at me like, yeah, why are you here? Say, sorry, I know I feel... I know that I feel dumb, but there's nothing I can do. So there have been some additions, and I know this me. because I know Absolutely. I saw. Tell I know me. I know I sent the piece your way. I noticed you uh, added a bunch of San Marcos from Ulysses yeah. Nardine. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, what made you go with that particular ad? I know they're all ultra limited. They're hand painted. I mean, I really like the colors. For example, the Matador. If you look at the pink of the socks, it's just amazing. I like the Torre di Pisa. You know, this orange yellow color. I like the castle with the. Uh, red and uh, uh, white Swiss flag. These are the type of watches that, so the stuff from the 90s, uh, as of the last five years or so, was stuff that was extremely difficult to sell for, for modern watch dealers. And it becomes extremely difficult to sell, and then all of a sudden, once people understand what they are, almost overnight they become impossible to find. I've been trying to find uh, Roths from uh, the 90s, they're impossible. They shot through the roof instantaneously. And this guy tends to be a trendsetter when it comes to that next vintage market, so watch 
out. Now, Parmigiani, we didn't talk about Parmigiani last time. Well, here basically the Parmigiani you can see here, you have all the very first generation, starting uh, the, from the memory time, which is the smaller one you can see, which is the watch that is still wears every single day. And then we have the series of seven Ionicas, which are amazing. You know, this is like the eight days power reserve movement. And uh, as you can see, I, I like it quite a lot. So it's amazing. And now, then, yeah, the blonde pen, as you now know, we, 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 briefly, we briefly touched upon the show part LUCs, the early LUCs, and I noticed you brought a ton of them. Yeah, you have two. No, I have two of them. which are the LUC from the 1990s. Uh, as you know very well, Roman, the movement was made by Parmigiani. Yes. And to me, it's still one of the best uh, movement for the last 40 years. Those are basically both in the uh, white gold, one with salmon dye, one with blue dye, barrier. And here we have the St. Maurice Chrono. You know, still quite attractive. I remember when I started in the business, these were pretty popular. Like people yeah. were buying them because it was a good option for a sports watch and a gold that were relatively inexpensive in comparison to some of their counterparts. This was a big deal. Now that they were introduced this watch, what do they call the new model? I forget. Alpina. Alpina. Now that they, they, they introduced these models and I think these are now, hold on a second. I know you're not, are these both black? Uh, one in steel. Oh, one st wow. steel and one in platinum. Wow. So you found one in stainless steel. That's yeah, amazing. I got one. Well, you're missing a yellow gold. I have one. <laughs> <laughs> but with that said, I mean... You see, this is very important. This is the only wartime known of blonde paint. It's a wartime. This is the only one known. Trust me. Here, basically, we have a bunch of brigade. So a bunch now, of you, brigade. Went, you went ape shit on e-bills. Uh, like, yeah, but also the Brigade. Look at this collection of four, uh, 32, so this, this I didn't see last time. We have time. the Onyx Tuxedo and we that. have the Lapis Tuxedo. One of these was sold like a few months ago at Philips for $167,000. And that was the... Mind under, you, this is, this is a watch five bigger. years ago. We as dealers would probably pay around 10, 15,000. Absolutely. This is how quick this happened. Absolutely. Guys, overall, positive, positive outcome of the antique show. We had a great show in terms of sales numbers. A bit of a pickup from the B2B side of things and a much higher and more enthusiastic pickup from the client end. And yes, also... Guys, like, comment, and subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode next week. Thank you.